Um, no, seriously, thanks for to uh, Eric, Gwen, Brent, and Joe for having us here. This is always a great event. For those of you that are regulars, you've seen me here for several years talking about Nevsun Resources, our great asset in Eritrea, and how we are going to grow the company. Well, I'm proud to be here today to tell you that we have entered into a transaction to acquire Reservoir Minerals, which you heard about earlier from Joe. I think, uh, judging by some of the faces that I know and some of the people I've talked to over the last couple days, I know there are shareholders of both sides here in the room. So I'm going to focus not on going through the details of assets, but just on some of the key attributes that uh, we in management see to the merits of the transaction. Uh, look a little bit to introduce those that aren't familiar with the reservoir side to Serbia and, and the reservoir asset, and just talk a little about how this fits well with what we've stated for years as the growth strategy for Nevsun Resources. I will be making some forward-looking statements. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into a lot of details here about numbers, so I encourage if you have any interest peaked from this presentation, please visit the websites of the, the companies, look at the numbers. The circulars are going out for the shareholder votes uh, mid this coming week, so they should be getting materials for those of you who are shareholders. There's lots of good information there. Read it to make your judgment about the value of this that's created by this transaction. So Nevsun. You've heard me here for several years talking about the company, and I've showed this chart every time, so we're being very consistent. And for those of you maybe that are from the reservoir side that aren't so familiar, I'll talk about what these four bubbles mean to a Nevsun shareholder. Uh, maximizing the value of the Bisha resources. So Nevsun is a single asset producing company. We've got a great mine in Eritrea in Northeast Africa called the Bisha Mine. At that mine, we've got nine and a half years of reserve life, so we've got lots of runway ahead of us. We generate strong earnings and cash flow consistently from that asset. That as cash has flown up to the company, and we've managed to build up a substantial uh, balance sheet to reinvest. Um, that asset has 35 million tons of, of measured and indicated resources and over 15 million tons of inferred resources. Uh, only about 30% of those are converted to reserves. So maximizing value from those resources is an investment we continue to make. And we've been looking at underground mining options on several of those satellite deposits and in the main deposit over the last several years. And we expect decision in the next year or so over what direction those uh, developments are going to head. Second bucket, growth. You know, I heard several of the introductory speeches talking about district potential and expiration upside. And in fact, as I was looking at Joe's slides and he was talking about quality, uh, I checked off nine of the 12 check marks for what makes quality at the Bishop mine. The two knocks probably being the political risk and uh, originally the permitting and financeability. Well, we've knocked those back by actually getting into production, so I'd say we're now up to 11 out of 12. So very high quality asset. Um, we do have district scale potential, so that's another word, few words that have been bandied about. Nevsun has a very significant exploration package in Eritrea, and we continue to, to generate cash flow and reinvest that in exploration on that asset. And that team has been generating you know, 10, 10 to 20 million tons of additional resources per year with the drill bit, and those are investments we will keep making in Bishop. Uh, third, I'll jump over to the far right side, sustain the dividend. Nevsun is a dividend payer. For you, those of you that are a Nevsun shareholder, it's a very significant dividend. You get four cents US every quarter. That's uh, at current share prices somewhere around a four and a half percent yield it is the objective to sustain and keep paying dividends. The last bucket, which really what you want to hear about, is diversification. You know, one of the knocks against Nevsun has been we've built up such a large amount of cash in the company compared to the market cap. Prior to uh, the reservoir transaction, we had over $438 million US in cash in the bank and available to the company. And everyone said, well, you're going to waste the money. You're going to do a bad transaction. Well, it's a uh, management's view and uh, the reservoir board and management support us to say that we have found a great use for that capital. And I'm going to spend the rest of the presentation talking about that. So what were our M&A criteria for diversifying and spending that money? Well, we were looking for primarily copper assets. The Reservoir Minerals transaction brings a great copper asset. It's feasibility stage, it's in Europe, and it diversifies very meaningfully over time the Nevsun cash flow and earnings that's coming out of Eritrea. So what is Reservoir Minerals? So for those of you from the other side who may not know Reservoir as well, Reservoir is a project generator company 
They've been very successful in going in and securing land packages, and then they take the approach of putting the expiration to major companies to earn into those projects. Uh, they have a land, significant land position in Serbia. They also have ground in Romania, Macedonia, and a few projects in Africa. The primary focus for Nevsun is Serbia, and the Timuk project, which is the primary asset in, that's subject to the acquisition, is in Serbia, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. However, all the other pro properties are coming along with the transaction, and Nevsun wants to systematically go through those before making any decisions to let any of those properties go, but we believe we have the balance sheet to also advance the other exploration projects. So upcoming, I, I, I'm going to do my little bit of whiz-bang. You know, not a lot of people really know about Serbia, so I'm going to give a little, uh, there's a little video here that I've uh, clipped together a few bits on Serbia. Pardon the uh, rough editing, this is in a draft stage, but I thought it'd be a good to roll out here at the uh, Metal Investor Forum, a little uh, intro to uh, Serbia. Serbia, with a population of over 7 million, and now a candidate for EU status, sits at the epicenter of the Balkan region and is home to a prosperous mining industry that predates the Roman Empire. Belgrade, Serbia's fast-paced capital, is one of the largest cities in Eastern Europe. Located at the picturesque confluence of the Sava and Danube rivers, Belgrade has all the amenities of every modern European city. From Belgrade, we travel just 244 kilometers down a paved highway to the town of Bor. A true mining community, Bor is home to a skilled workforce that has relied on mining as an economic driver in the area for more than a century. The Bor Maidenpec mining complex is in the northern half of the mineral-rich Timok district, part of the Tethian belt, regarded as one of the richest copper mineral belts in the world, second only to the Andes belt of the Americas. The extensive history of mining in the Timok has resulted in the development of an unusually complete mining infrastructure a smelter, rail lines, electric power substation, and a skilled labor force which is capable and committed to mining. I think you get some idea that we're stepping into a little different situation in Eritrea than we did in Eritrea. However, you'll see there are some strong similarities, uh, particularly in the fact that uh, one of the other key criteria for investing in a good asset is high grade. Well, that comes in spades, as Joe talked about earlier. In fact, you see I have the same little heart-shaped picture here of, of the ore body. Uh, to be specific, the current resource as uh, subject to the PEA reservoir put out about a month ago is 35 million tons of 2.9% copper and 1.7 grams per ton gold with some real sweet high grade on top of that at 1.7 million tons of 13.5% copper and 10 grams per ton gold. Uh, reservoir Minerals has conducted a PEA uh, on this ore body, uh, came up with uh, 1.5 billion or so NAV at uh, current at uh, long-term prices of three bucks copper and $1,200 gold, and about a billion at spot prices. So a very robust asset that we believe is very likely to be developed into a mine. Um, it's still a PEA, however, and Nevsun will investigate other ways of maximizing value from the, this asset. We do have the balance sheet to go to a milling operation straight out of the gate and perhaps increase the amount of metal production over time. So we're going to be looking at advancing the project through conducting a pre-feasibility study and to look at uh, the PEA study that uh, Reservoir did as well as other mining options as we go forward. In addition to this uh, upper zone, which is the high-grade near-term development project, there also is an option on a much larger uh, ore body called the Porphyry Zone. It's subject to a joint venture agreement with Freeport McMurrin that's a hangover from the agreement that uh, went through the right of first offer over the last couple months. Uh, and you probably, some of you probably noticed that uh, Lundin was originally in play with Freeport for their side of the joint venture. And through this transaction, all of that ownership has now been consolidated. And that's one of the key values that this transaction brings to, the, to both the reservoir and Nevsun shareholders. You can see pre-ROFO, ROFO stands for right of first offer. This was a, basically an agreement between the two partners, Freeport McMurrin and, and Reservoir, that were, developed, that were doing the exploration work on the Timuk project. Um, the either one could buy the other out if the, if the one partner decided to sell. So Freeport, with uh, uh, Lundin as a partner, chose to sell their 75% of the project. Uh, 
and Reservoir had an option for 60 days to exercise that ROFO and then take Freeport's side of the project as well as the 25% they already own. Uh, we funded that, trend, that uh, ROFO through the first part of this transaction. That's now closed. So as of May 3rd, Reservoir is owner of 100% of the Upper Zone project and is operator. Freeport is now out of that part of the ore body. However, Freeport, whose interest always was this opportunity for the lower zone, remains a current 60 or 36% owner and post feasibility study a 54% owner of that lower zone project. So they're still very much there and very interested and we look forward to working with uh, Freeport in the future. Uh, basic terms of the transaction, you know, Nevsun has paid through the $135 million we forwarded to Reservoir to fund that ROFO and the equity consideration, almost $500 million in consideration uh, to Reservoir shareholders. Um, in exchange, Nevsun gets this great development project to deploy our balance sheet to grow and diversify the company. Uh, we believe we have the skills to advance that asset. If you have any other questions about the transaction, better done over a beer. Um, we believe the transaction brings very significant benefit to Reservoir shareholders. Um, it increases their exposure to the Tamuk project. They're now 33% owners of the pro forma company. We're fully funded to develop their DSO option project or, in other, or to get financed and build the project in another method if, after we do the PFS. Uh, we've got a strong operating team at Nevsun that built and has delivered a ton of value at the Bishop Mine and we plan to deliver that same value through development of Tamuk. So in closing, Nevsun brings a strong track record of success to the Tamuk project. Uh, Nevsun has d uh, put into the ground at Bisha over $420 million in capital. We've done that through three phases of development on time and under budget, and we expect to have a similar track record in a few years at the Tamuk project. We also return value to shareholders We've put back $130 million US to our shareholders to the dividend program, as well as having the shareholders participate in the equity price appreciation, which we expect to come as we de-risk the, de the Tamuk project. If you have any other questions, I look forward to uh, having a beer outside after this wraps up. Okay, thank you very much.